One ringy dingy, two ringy dingies. Hello, Hello, your influence. Let me turn your volume up. What do you want to talk about? A class action suit by the families of the people who died in the offices of Marsh and McLennan in Tower One on 911. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to sit here and luxuriate. Well, I think Able Danger is the only organization in the world that could usefully offer a contingency-based service to the families. And because they tied it up in New York so that the families of these people who died or were injured on 911 have to go through, I think it was the Hellerstein Court, Southern District Court of uh, New York, um, I got a suggestion for April Danger that we launch or help the families launch a class action suit in the United Kingdom. Oh, good idea. And by the way, the guy's first name is Alvin, Alvin Hellerstein. I just put it in the chat room. And he's one of the three chip, chipmunks. There's Alvin, uh, Seymour. And who's the other guy? Do you remember? Alvin Seymour. Okay, I'll go to the chat room and find out who the third ch uh, chipmunk is. Alvin, Theodore, and Simon. I can't remember. Okay, somebody want to tell us who the chipmunks are. So you think we could get a class action lawsuit in the UK, huh? Yeah, well, I think, uh, I, I don't know if uh, fighter pilots are up to this language, but wouldn't we be launching a flank attack then? Over to you. Yeah, except for our laws are based on uh, the UK laws, and the UK is uh, probably more corrupt than the US because the U.S. is just a colony of the U.K., as is Canada, according to my understanding. But not to raid. Okay, I got Simon. Simon <coughs> Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, I think. And Calvin in Florida says Mo, Larry, and Curly, but he's wrong, and Curly only has one R, so don't try to trick me again. Back to you, David. Well, our network is an incredible <coughs> gathering network, and we know that, But uh, and I don't know why I didn't know it, or I hadn't heard of it, or didn't research it. But about three days, days ago, I got a maybe from DD in the United Kingdom, whom you've met several times, I believe, um, or, or via him. I was told that there was a real-time interactive wagering system for event outcomes, a patent, and it looks like a world organization patent. So every country, every man and his dog has got a stake in this. That is to say the patent owner or the patent assignee is protected in every country of the world. And what you can do with this field, it's quite amazing, interactively, you can bet on outcomes. Like, um, let's say, how many firefighters are going to be killed during the Amalgam Virgo slash Global Guardian exercise on 911? Uh, and that, of course, allows those who are friendly with the bookie uh, to arrange the number of dead firefighters so they scoop the pot and that can make them exceedingly rich. So what companies do you think would be capable of defining an outcome of a crime before the crime is committed if, you, if we were looking at, for example, the number of firefighters who might get killed if the two towers were demolished over to you? Uh, White's Club, Circo, and the United States Senior Executive Service, and the person of Christine Marcy. How'd I do? Well, that's why I pay you the big bucks. And talking of big bucks, I think we've been a long time in this process of being, let's say, I don't think that was necessarily our position when we started out. Yeah. We're now in a position, Able Danger, collectively. We are the only credible organization to help a family group of, let's say, amateurs who lost loved ones in the Twin Towers to bring a class action suit against the people who had them killed, whether that was intentionally or otherwise. And what do you think a class action suit for by the families of all of the individuals killed in the Marshall McLennan office, what do you think we should recommend they go for? Uh, would it be a billion dollars or what do you think? Over to you, Phil. How many victims were there? Um, actually, I'm not looking at that, but I think there were 600. Well, then somebody needs to multiply. In fact, rather than multiply, I'll do it. Uh, you think there's 600. Let me find my calculator. I'm very good at math, but I'm not that good at math. I'm not even good at finding my calculator. Let's see if it's on the next page. 
No, I was on the correct page. So calculator, calculator, wherefore art thou calculator? Let me jump in. It's 295 employees and 63 contractors field. I was overestimating. Okay, 258 total times 33 million. And I'll have your answer here in a minute. And if you were really an honors degree graduate of the Queens College, uh, I wouldn't need to be doing this. Oh, it, error. Okay, can somebody multiply 33 million times 258? Because that's the answer that David's searching for. Uh, the reason I got 33 million is because the people that are trying to hurt Russia with a financial settlement for those lost on Malaysia 17, which is a big joke because nobody was lost on Malaysia 17. All those corpses were boarded dead. That's why they were decomposed when they hit the ground, the vast majority of them, say 239. And uh, the other 40 that hit the ground were not decomposed, but they had no blood which means they've been processed in Amsterdam. So uh, the phony baloney people, which may include, uh, I forgot the name of the Mormon and, uh, oh yes, yeah, let me think about it. It sounds like urologist, uh, Uchdorf. Yeah, Uchdorf and Obama apparently are sweating ice cubes because they're trying to deflect blame for uh, German wings 9525 and Malaysia 17, and they're trying to place these on organizations such as the uh, Russian Federation, and they're asking for 11 million per victim, per survivors of the victims of Malaysia 17, which is a great big Easter egg hunt because there was not a single victim on Malaysia 17. They were all dead when they were boarded. So they were victimized elsewhere. In the case of 239, they were victimized in Malaysia 370. And the other 40 people, I'll let the Dutch uh, phony baloney people that work with goons like Angus Houston and Warren Truss explain the 40 uh, Dutch passengers that were freshly clear, killed but had no, blo no blood. So using the $11 million uh, benchmark set by Dieter Uchtdorf and Barack Obama uh, for the Malaysia 17 non-dead corpses, meaning simply that they were dead before they boarded the flight so they didn't get killed when somebody shot down Malaysia 17. Uh, but the benchmark used by Obama and his uh, cronies is 11 million per. And so I took that times three because there's traveling under the uh, RICO statutes. And since the crimes were brokered out of the United States, RICO applies. And so I think 33 million Per victim, and you said there's 258 victims. Yeah, two, sorry, if there's 295 employees and 63 contractors. Oh, okay, that's uh, 363 times 33 million, and that's what I would go for. And I'd be I'd be willing to work for uh, five percent of that. I don't know what you need. You'd probably need an excess of that because mineral water doesn't grow on trees. So over to you, David. Well, you're dead right there, Phil. But I think, and I'll leave it entirely to you because I think you've got a good sense of equity and you're closer to the heart of the beast. I think it should be, if, if we can structure that in law, that able danger offers its service on a contingency basis. Um, and while we're in the process, I think it's legitimate to say to the families, all right, if you put some money in the pool and we'll pay, you and I will pay ourselves a monthly income and the winnings... 30% goes to Able Danger, and I'll leave it to you and the wisdom of our team to decide how we disperse that kind of money, because uh, we may want to set up um, an irreversible process in tertiary education, where instead of these clowns and parasites going in for you know politic, political science, like uh, David Cameron at Oxford, we have chairs of uh, forensic economics, and we take major cases, and we solve them on a contingency basis. How about that? Well, maybe you'd like to do that. I'd like to go down to the Texas ranch and retire. And meanwhile, I just put up a math problem for somebody with a calculator, 363 times 33 million. And I believe that starts with a 1, 1, 979 followed by a million. So that would be 11 billion, 979 million. I believe, and so 10% of that would be 1 billion point nine, and so 5% of that would be 950 million. I don't think you need that much, and I don't think I do. Do you? 
Well, it depends on what you, if you have something in mind. I have something in mind for that kind of money because I want to transform the world's food food supplies. But the point is, it's a lot of money. But I think, you know what, Phil? Able Danger deserves every penny of it because no one else is worth a pinch of SH blank T. Would that be a word similar to effluence or excrement? <laughs> something like it. Because can you name any other organization, intelligence or counterintelligence, that have progressed so far, so close to the final solution here? Over to you. No, there is no other um, organization. And, you know, I'm just glad that finally after 10 years of coaching, uh, I've been able to get you to struggle along to where you're somewhat useful, although uh, not not very often. But uh, where's Silas? Uh, Silas is sitting happily at my feet. Um, you're about to go into prayer time. Um, it's cool here, so provided he doesn't, well, I may put him, uh, in prayer time, I may put him in the car. Okay, make sure you crack a window because there's probably a bunch of PETA people up there lurking around uh, the redacted location just to the north of Vancouver, British Columbia, where there's a man whose last name is Rankin who ordered a belt that's a size we don't have. So we'll have to uh, communicate with the belt maker in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and get him a belt. And speaking of belts and buckles and books, uh, I think that we fulfilled six or so book orders over the last 24 hours, and one of them is going to Able Danger Belt Buckle number 007. I can't remember who that is, but... <laughs> uh, oh, do you remember who that is? Yes, I think that's me, and I'm very flattered, and thank you very much. Well, then are you going to read the book? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, there'll be a test. Every time yes, you finish know, a chapter... It, it fills me with terror to think I'm being tested by you because I always seem to fail. That's because you never read. You tell me you read, but you don't. You see, but you don't observe. No, I scan. Yeah, I know, but I didn't ask you if you're going to scan the book. Let's no, repeat. Let's repeat. Put your hand on your dog. I... Okay, uh, here, come here, Silas. I got it by, I got it by the tail. Oh, no, you shouldn't do that. The PETA people might be listening to this show. Oh, wow. uh, but anyway, it, in a couple of minutes, I'll go to the prayer time, but we have about three or four minutes. So would you like to bore us to tears before I uh, save us? Yeah, no, and this, this I really think is not boring because let's go back to that class action suit. So remember that the head office of Serco is in the United Kingdom and uh, Serco has got a pass from a variety of organizations for its criminal intent and behavior including the City of London Police, which I thought was very interesting, that said there is no evidence that Serco's directors knew of fraud in the prisoner tagging program. Well, isn't that just hunky-dory? Because the City of London Police, in some people's minds, goes back to Roman times. It's a, within the square mile field. Did you know that? No, go ahead and educate all of us, me included. Right, well, it, it goes back to Roman times and the Guild Hall, the City of London Guild Hall, and I think they're now into the 776th or 7th Lord Mayor of the City of London, is built above the Colosseum. And apparently the Brits, which are quite inventive, you know, I mean, we, what, we gave birth to a part of uh, the United States of America, which is also very inventive. Um, they realized that a very good way of having someone whacked was to go down to the Colosseum, right, and hire a woman. Because did you know that we had female gladiators and there are graves of female uh, gladiators where the muscles around the biceps are extremely exaggerated, even though they're women, because they were able to hang it, hold a sword and chop someone's head off. Don't you think the British uh, women are rather robust? Well, I don't know about the bustiness. I know Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton is not very busty and she's a gladiator, turf monster. Uh, there's another word, carpet muncher. But uh, she and my sister had a three-way relationship with Lee Aguaria, at least I'm interpreting that from their silence, as I've written that for a couple of years now. And we have about a minute and a half before we're going to go say a prayer. Okay. Um, and so why don't you use the minute? In fact, it's now a minute. Over to you. Okay. So uh, a very good place to hire killers on a contract basis and send them a long, long way away to do the killing is, is from the city of London. So when Serco basically uh, developed 3,000 tagged prisoners, some of whom were dead, some of whom were back in jail, some of whom had never committed a crime, some of them were broad. Uh, you basically got the ingredients for a long range, 
murder for hire team of the type that could don the uniforms donned by elevator mechanics that uh, blew up the Twin Towers and ran away from the scene without defending or protecting the people who were fried and vaporized in the said elevators, insured by accident, may I say. So over to you, Phil. Okay, well, it's almost time for a prayer, so if you want to take uh, your dog out, if you really have a dog. In fact, I'm not even sure you really have a yoke. Did he just bark or was that you? No, no, it wasn't me. Woof, woof. Okay, well, watch me scare your dog. Oh, that's not a, that's not scary. That's just a little growl. That wasn't me. That was my pet chinchilla. I let it out of my pants. Uh, okay, anyway, we're going to go ahead, Dave, and then I'll do the prayer stuff. Okay, I, I'm going to take him to the car in case he gets too excited. I don't blame him for being excited when he hears my voice, but let's hear the voice of God here in the scripture that we're going to start with, Colossians 2, uh, 2, 2, and 3. And this is where I embarrass myself by taking an extraordinary amount of time to find Colossians 2. Uh, oh, I'm getting real close. In fact, I'm, I'm hotter anyway. 2, uh, 2, and 3, and that would be right about here. Uh, my purpose is, well, let's go back to 1. I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at La uh, Laodicea and for all who have not met me personal. This must be Paul talking, uh, which used to be Saul. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, let's back up because that triggers the thought about Proverbs 1 7, which says, and I'm doing this off the top of my head and the top of my heart. Proverbs 1 7 says, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, and as far as knowledge goes, you can look that up in Jeremiah 33 3 and also in Daniel 2 21. But those aren't on today's. Uh, program, but a couple of other things. There's a Proverbs 16, 9, and I know where Proverbs is uh, because that's probably the book that's uh, over the course of my life has meant the most to me personally, and I've ex explained that many times, but if you take a look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you'll see how I got hooked. Let's take a look at Proverbs uh, 16, 9. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Um, there's a lot of stepping going on right now. And for those of you who've been following the ranch uh, process over the last two years, some of you have probably lost your faith in that. Well, don't lose it quite yet. But one more thing from the Bible, Isaiah 33, 6. He will be the sure foundation for your times, a rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to the treasure. There you have it. Now let's have six, uh, 90 seconds of silence for Colonel James Sable, who was uh, murdered under the orders of G.H.W. Bush, Jeb Bush, General Al Gray, Commandant of the Marine Corps, Lieutenant General Davis, former Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, Brigadier General Wayne T. Adams, and Porky Underwood, who was a Colonel in the Marine Corps, and his next door neighbor, who, who uh, got reduced in grade from Colonel 06 to Major 04, because his murder of his neighbor was so sloppily done. 90 seconds, please.
Okay, that's the end of 90 seconds. David, did you want to bore us with your incredibly uh, monotonous dribble? No, I don't want to bore you. I want to turn um, April Danger into a well-financed uh, forensic economics group in which everyone who contributes to the solution benefits financially. Well, okay, but uh, how do you intend to do that? By helping the families of the victims in the Marsh and McLennan offices launch a class action suit for damage is in the United Kingdom. Yes, but how do we accomplish that? Do you have any idea? Well, we start with probably our agents in the United Kingdom finding out because, let's see, with 300 plus victims in the M&M Towers, I think they concluded that 5% on average of the people who died in the Twin Towers were British. Well, I'm just doing the math while I sit here in my dear ear. Um, about 33% of the planning was done by the British. So would the British people end up paying that British debt or would somebody else in the United States end up paying it? No, the shareholders of Circo. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, Circo is the octopus, an octopus. In fact, I got frustrated today because I was trying to find JFK's speech in Ireland, which I think he gave... Uh, either June 28th of 63 or 10 days before he was murdered. But the reason he got murdered is because he exposed Circo's octopus, which, of course, is G.H.W. Bush and his Fourth Reich friends. Over to you. Uh, well, um, that's interesting because um, included amongst the shareholders are some very interesting pension funds that will provide a direct benefit to anyone who was ever a, a member of faculty in the United States uh, tertiary education system. That is to say, TIAA CREF, Teachers Insurance Annuity Association, College Retirement Equity Funds. So it will be a great pleasure to take these parasites for a few hundred million dollars, don't you think? Well, is that for me and you, or is that for the broader group? Well, uh, I'm going to leave all those decisions to you. What I would say, Field, is I will take whatever you take, provided it's more than 5% of the winnings. Oh, okay. And um, anything that's left over after what you and I take, and I, w I would like us both to be on a monthly retainer because we put a lot of sweat equity in getting where we've got, and then um, the rest can be divided up am amongst the – members of the group according to your criteria, which might be something that's like they were early buyers of the build. Oh, okay. Well, then what I can do uh, to accommodate that is I can try to, since you didn't really form the thought in a lucid manner, I can form the thought in a lucid manner. We need some help from people in England or people in the United States to reach out to the uh, surviving or to the corporation of M&M, &M, whoever they are. Who did you say they were, David? McClanahan? Uh, Marsh, Marsh and McLennan, one of the world's largest reinsurance companies. And I'll explain why they were massacred in the, twin, in the North Tower a little later. Okay, well, then watch this. Uh, on the count of three, uh, anyone who wants some of my share of the money that we're not going to get because I think the Brits are just as complicit as the Americans... But anyway, if, uh, if we were to get a retainer from the survivors or the corporation of M&M, &M, then I would gladly give uh, three, enough money to buy three large pizzas to whoever can get me an email address. David, are you sniffling at, okay, let's put it back in your court. Are you willing to buy three large pizzas? So anyone who, does, you didn't finish your sentence? No, I know. So I gave it to you to finish it. And then we, I will look pressure and you will look like well you'll look like yourself okay well uh, yeah on my first month's retainer i'm willing to buy uh, pizzas for anyone closely associated with ever uh, you you identify as a solution to 911 okay we'll take a look uh, at the chat room underneath the snacks and you'll see that uh first two people in texas have already come up um and they've mentioned, let me find out who they are. Yes, Texas Maverick said Joe Barton of Venice, Texas is a good guy. Uh, three below that, Maranatha says, I know of Pete and Joel, but don't know much about Gomert. Spelt wrong. That's okay. I can't spell it either. I think it's G-O-H-M-E-R-T. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to come at this from forming a, a, a group 
that would be, uh, let's see, first and foremost, the group headquarters is going to be in Texas. Secondly, the group is going to be uh, congressional servants that truly are concerned with their constituents as well as veterans. And then they're going to be invited to this ranch, which we hope to be getting uh, fairly soon. And uh, I'm dealing with someone of dubious character who's looking for me to distribute some financial support to congressional candidates. And I'm because it's not my money that I may become responsible for very shortly, it's quite unlikely that I would ever, no, it's not unlikely, it's impossible I'd ever um, obligate a nickel of the money that will come to me, to my control for the benefit of veterans. Uh, if somebody doesn't have the nerve to come down to Athens, Texas and walk up the stairway or, you know, walk through the horse uh, facility, well, then they probably shouldn't be wasting stamps or phone calls trying to get money uh, out of the organization. But I'm hoping that somebody, and I think I saw that Maranatha from Texas has just put up a link uh, to, let me just see if I can find it. I'm sure she did. There was a link I solicited for the ranch. Uh, and Agent 66 put up a picture of the English garden by the uh, water feature. And yes, in fact, uh, Maranatha did put up the link. It's under the stairway, and the stairway again was put up by Agent 66, who, by the way, will be at the book signing on July 16th, the Saturday. And we're going to have two books to sign by then. It's uh, not impossible. We might have three, but that sounds like I'm putting pressure into myself. It's... Uh, it's almost 100% certain we're going to have two books to sign. And by the way, David, uh, as I mentioned earlier, your book will be in the mail tomorrow. And books to uh, Jersey and Leeds in the UK, uh, somewhere in Indiana, and about seven, eight addresses will be getting their books. And the way this has to work, uh, whether anyone likes it or not, including me, is the books need to be paid for before they're shipped. Because if we were to ship a book to someone, uh, there are a few exceptions to this. Some of the books are being exchanged for sweat equity. I'll just give you an example of who would receive those. And uh, then other people will know if they're in the same league. But uh, Craig Peterson does the covers for both books. And uh, the cover of one of the books, uh, Foul BVR, and just so nobody misinterprets that, BVR is fighter pilot talk for beyond visual range. Uh, and the reason I think that that's unfortunate is if you don't see what you're shooting at, you're taking someone else's word for it that what you're shooting at needs to die. Uh, back in 1962, there was a movie called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and everybody thought it was Jimmy Stewart that shot, uh, let me think of that actor's name, Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin was playing the part of Liberty Valance, and... Uh, Jimmy Stewart was paying, playing the part of an attorney that was called out for a duel. And uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance was not Jimmy Stewart, but rather John Wayne's character who took a shot from BVR beyond visual range. Uh, so we got 1962, we got a BVR shot uh, in a movie. And that was to soften up the minds of America so that when JFK died uh, 13 months later from a series of BVR shots, at least three shots hit him. Uh, there may be as many as eight shooters. Uh, that's open to argument, but people have been arguing that for the last 53 years, and nobody seems to form a consensus. So the consensus will be formed at FM 2860, whatever. Let me just look at it. Down there in Athens, Texas. And I'm hoping that uh, people that want to participate in having fun with this would go ahead and open the link uh, at the link from Maranatha underneath the stairway from Agent 66. There's a lot of photos, and uh, one of the photos in there that people should sort of dwell on is the uh, 300 feet by 130 foot, I think those are the dimensions, of a writing arena. And in that writing arena, there's an air-conditioned viewing box, and behind the air-conditioned viewing box, uh, there's some apartments. And so uh, I'm working with a small group Right now, that small group involved in, includes a non-veteran male who's 49, a non-American uh, citizen who is 
49 or a little bit plus. Um, an American veteran who's around 61 and another American veteran who's around 66. And Agent 66 just earned a free hors d'oeuvre when she comes to the plunge because that's the inside of the arena. Uh, I believe the dimensions, the uh, square footage is 32,600, and I believe one dimension is 300. So if anybody can divide 32.6 by 300, I think we would come up with uh, somewhere around 100 feet. And that's uh, a riding arena. And towards the back of it, you can see under the clear span steel beams, which are at least 100 feet. Uh, and on top of those are a bunch of steel purloins, I think they're called. Uh, but this is a huge building, and I, you know, that's good because it's in Texas and everything's bigger in Texas. Um, but I cannot imagine what type of a pro veteran, pro patriot, pro Christian, pro Texas gathering we couldn't have uh, in a building that size, regardless of what the weather is doing outside. And um, if this happens, I want people to know that. Uh, it's not my money, even if it looks like I'm involved. Uh, if it doesn't happen, I want people to know that I'm not going to jump out of the second floor window and I'm not going to have a sad look on my face. But I truly believe it's going to happen. And if it is to happen, uh, we'll probably have news fairly soon. David, over to you. Yeah, okay, thanks, Phil. So when we present or help the families present a claim for wrongful deaths for the people inside the uh, Marshall McLennan offices, of 911, that will be against the shareholders of Circo. And Circo has some very interesting shareholders, including the Teachers Pension Fund, TIAA CREF, and the University Superannuation Scheme. And that's consistent with the words of one of the uh, shareholders in Circo, uh, a very senior guy, which is David Rockefeller um, at JP Morgan, who said, The world is ready to move to a supranational government of an intellectual elite and world bankers. So he makes a rather naive assumption that the intellectual elite would be potentially beneficiaries of these two pension funds, when essentially with the greatest respect for some of the people who taught me at Cambridge, I would say the significant majority of the so-called intellectual elite are entirely parasitical. That is to say they don't contribute to anything other than confusion and death and chaos. Anyway, that's by the by. But of course, I'm referring to Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, who I believe taught at Georgetown University, and little Barry, who taught the, the workings of Saul Alinsky, I think, at the University of Chicago. Um, world bankers, of course. Well, world bankers in the shareholder grouping of Serco that met with Chris Hyman on the 47th floor of Tower Number 1, just before the first uh, drone hit the north face of the North Tower and killed everyone in the Marsh and McLennan office, well, some of those bankers would include HSBC. HSBC has paid $1.9 billion into Field Sisters Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Fund so they can continue to run drugs and weapons around the world and cause havoc and chaos. And HSBC should, of course, be recognized as a racketeering influenced and corrupt organization and dismantled and its uh, assets distributed amongst people who can handle them honestly. Now, of course, that didn't happen. Who else is a banker in HSBC? Uh, sorry, a shareholder. Well, there's JP Morgan. Um, there's BNP Paribas, which is a co-shareholder with AXA, the people who paid out the dead peasant life insurance when the towers came down. There's a couple of other insurance companies. One is called Aviva and the other called Alliance. And Alliance happened to be the insurer for MH17, MH370, and that Singapore plane. What was the one, what was the flight number of that Singapore plane that went downfield? It went down in association with MH370 or MH17. Yeah, yeah, it's in, it's, yes, that's right. I, I think it was Singapore, yeah. Well, of course it was, but that's why I'm here, is to make sure you look smarter than you truly are. Um, in the case of Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia 370, it was Singapore Flight 68, 
strangely enough, when Malaysia 17 went down, it was Singapore 351. And if I misspoke with either one of those, someone can correct me. But uh, Agent 66 likes to Google. Let's see, I'll, I'll uh, let her do one. And Afterburner, so she'll do the other. So Agent 66, would you please Google MH370 plus Singapore, that's SQ68, plus BUAP plus Able Danger. And for Afterburner, if you could put in MH17 plus SQ351 or Singapore 351 plus BUAP plus Able Danger, I think you'll find that those are the correct flight numbers. Over to you, David. Right. So we've got shareholders that include the Teachers Pension Fund in the United States, the Teachers Pension Fund in the United Kingdom, known as the Super University Superannuation Scheme. We've got a whole bunch of uh, SCSI banks, including HSBC, the world's drug hub money launderer, uh, which was founded or basically run out of uh, the London office in 1865 by David Cameron's great-great-grandfather. So plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. It stays in the family. These guys are parasites from day about day one and from day 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 whatever the end uh, end of days is. Who else is there? So we've got these insurance outfits. Then we've got some governments, which I find very interesting. Three government entities are shareholders in Serco. Uh, the government of the United Kingdom, government of Saudi Arabia, and the government of Singapore, all of whom are closely associated with the events of 911 and the recent downing of the aircraft. Now, let me come to Martian McLennan. It looks as though this patent that uh, Hillary Clinton arranged, remember she was a patent lawyer, it was issued for the real-time um, betting or wagering on event outcomes to a man called Howard Lutnick. Now, little Howie Lutnick, who is he? Well, he happens to be the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald who on the morning of 911 conveniently decided he was going to drop his child off at kindergarten school with his wife. And so he was out of the office when his colleagues were obliterated, in many cases vaporized. And one could, I suppose, bring an argument against Cantor Fitzgerald's um, by the families of the victims in the Cantor Fitzgerald office that they could bring a class action suit, but let them take care of themselves. Let's just focus on Howie Lutnick. So he gets this patent granted to him in June of 2001 for a real-time interactive wagering system for event outcomes. So what might they wager on, let's say, as they ran into the 911 Global Guardian exercise, a live fire exercise? Well, how about they wager on the number of dead firefighters in the exercise Global Guardian? And let's say an insider of little Howie Lutnick and the woman who arranged for his patent to be assigned to him, let's say they have a friend inside uh, Circo shareholders who says, well, I think 343 firefighters are going to die. And remember, this is prior to the actual attack. So you've got a whole bunch of guys doing what's called death betting, betting on the time and the number of dead bodies that are going to result from a given attack on a given company, Marshall McLennan. Where would be a good place to set up the bookmaker to handle the incoming bets. And essentially, that's a service of an insurance broker and a reinsurance broker. The incoming bets bet on a certain event. Certain uh, monies are drawn out of or drawn from investors in other bankers and insurance companies. Where would be a good place to set up the bookmaker for that exercise? Well, it turns out to be, I believe, between the 93rd and 100th floor of Tower Number 1, where the employees and contractors of Marshall McLennan were beavering away, running, I believe, what they thought was an exercise. 
However, it didn't stay an exercise for too long. It turned into the real thing, and 343 firefighters did actually die, or at least we are told they died in Towers 1 and 2. It doesn't quite match the Social Security Death Index, but uh, let's uh, pass on that one for the moment. But there would have been a significant number of people in the Marsh and McLennan offices who would have been witnesses to this fraud. So there's only one thing to do to them, is kill them, all of them. No one survived that attack, and the aircraft, together with the associated explosives inside the office elevators, survived the attack. Now, whether everyone involved in the war game exercise had that as an intent, or it was a side effect due to recklessness, negligence, or malfeasance, which I think is a term applied to public servants like uh, Christine Marcy and her cohorts in the senior executive service, that's not my point. Those people died wrongfully. Therefore, there is a claim for the families of the people who died wrongfully, which I think has that triple damages uh, amplifier, but whether that works in the United Kingdom, I don't know. It's a slam dunk if Able Danger chooses to do it. So I'm making a statement, I'm going to do it, and um, I hope I can attract and appeal to the rest of the Able Danger team because there's a, there's a lot of work to be done. Those who want to participate in a share in the contingency payments, I believe the task that Field and I will be setting them is find families of individuals who died in the Marsh and McLennan office and educate them into the possibility of a class action suit for damages, whether it's triple or whatever, I don't care. The Circo shareholders representing the United Kingdom government, the Saudi Arabian government and the Singapore government and the teachers' pension fund and the banks and the insurance companies, they got a lot of money. They have exceedingly deep pockets. In fact, to all intents and purposes, I would say the deep pocket is around $95 trillion dollars as represented by the assets under management of the carbon disclosure project, because one of the key banks in that project is JP Morgan, effectively controlled by Rockefeller. And the carbon disclosure projects, $95 trillion under assets under management, is run from New York through the Rockefeller Philanthropy Trust. So there's a lot of money at stake. Uh, we have a, a superbly coherent and coordinated case which involves the fraudulent conversion of assets in the United States Patent and Trademark Office by Hillary Clinton, a patent lawyer who has placed treasonously the assets of the United States Patent and Trademark Office into the custody of Serco. So Serco is cherry-picking patents and forming them into what I call uh, fragmentation, onion router and delivery devices so that they can coordinate attacks wherever and whenever an opportunity occurs, including this plane that went down in the Mediterranean. What is a fragmentation device? Well, that's pretty simple. Go to, I think, 1907 and a man called Mills in the United Kingdom who invented the Mills fragmentation grenade and patented it. And the British made 72 million fragmentation grenades, and they proved very useful in places like Vietnam, when a certain number of infiltrators into the United States military in Vietnam fragged their officers. And then they came back to the United States. And then it would appear they were embedded in these... 8A companies run by Field Sister since uh, I think around uh, 1998 she took over that operation. And the beauty of embedding fraggers in the Small Business Administration's 8A companies is they are or become sleeper cells because they're placed within a large defense contractor like Boeing or Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman and they're forced in because the large defense contractor is told by slime balls like Obama, you don't get 
the big defense contract, like refueling the tankers, unless you take on uh, a network of 8A companies owned by women, blacks, one-legged panthers, etc., etc., Malaysians, Vietnamese, and so on. And so essentially you've got a fifth column inside your major defense contractors, which have totally dismantled the defenses of the United States against any external or internal attack. Over to you, Phil. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, someone in the chat room mentioned, um, <clears throat> and I quote, I thought most of the 9-11 families accepted the payout the government did. Uh, that <clears throat> Did that include non-citizens of the USA? Do you see what she's asking there, David, and the lady asking is Eleanor Rigby looks at it? Okay, and then yes. there's a picture of there's a picture of Michael and Barry Sotero and one of the kids they stole, but that photo itself looks photoshopped. But anyway, uh, how do you respond to Eleanor Rigby where she thinks that uh, a majority of the families already got paid off uh, it, to settle the claims uh, and they did that in exchange for death certificates? you have a response to her? Yeah, I do, and uh, they also did it in exchange for the, uh, if you accept the money, you have to keep quiet. Okay, right. Right. Well, and uh, as far as nationality is concerned, I don't know that there was a restriction on compensation as to nationality. But remember, the na the ethnic origin. Oh, yes, this is very interesting. And thanks for that question. Um, when you are filing for your application for an accelerated uh, loan under the accelerated loan program uh, developed by Christine Marcy, Phil's sister, um, you have to prove you belong to an ethnically disadvantaged group. Now, some of those are predefined, like if you're apparently Malaysian or Chinese or Vietnamese, etc., you are deemed to be automatically disadvantaged because they think that white males uh, look down their noses or whatever at such people. I think that's absolute garbage, but then you're dealing with the hard left and the radicals. Um, I don't think, however, the compensation that's handed out is based on ethnic origin, um, even if it's considered to be a disadvantage for which you get a loan. I don't know if I've answered the question, but um, uh, I don't think that it's restricted by nation. Yep, that, that's not really the question, I don't think. I think the question is, since they've already been paid off, would they have any standing to go after more money? I think that's what she's asking. Oh, I don't know. But since we're doing it in the United Kingdom, it's irrelevant what the Palestine and his friends decide. Okay. Well, it's really easy to sit here and come up with these grandiose plans. It's a uh, horse of another color to put them into action. And so I don't know how we reach out to the survivors of uh, M&M. Uh, I don't know if that's M&M &M with nuts or M&M &M plane, but uh, it would have been nice to have that information two weeks ago because I was over in the UK and I had an audience of some pretty savvy people of all ethnic groups. And there's another Photoshop picture of Barry Swatero, Punahou 79. This one comes from Mensamax. Uh, and I think everybody knows the guy's a queer faggot. And I'm not being, uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to any non-queer faggots. Uh, but, you know, not only uh, this guy, the queer faggot, but also Hillary Clinton and others have been crammed down the American voters' uh, throats by elements in the United Kingdom, including the Crown agents and those that are sucking up to the Jesuit branch of the Vatican. And uh, uh, I, I often get asked, and I don't know why people ask me because I don't follow politics. I, and I don't know why people ask me tax questions because I don't pay taxes, but uh, they say, well, who can we vote for? I th you can't vote for anybody because they're all crooks or they wouldn't be running. David, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Well, the reason I didn't, uh ding on you when you went to England is because I hadn't heard of this patent, but this patent changes everything uh, because it was issued to Howard Lutnick, who very uh, graciously avoided uh, being incinerated at the top of the North Tower. And remember, inside that building, we had the chief executive officer of Serco, Chris Hyman, making a presentation to Serco shareholders on the 47th floor. And since Serco shareholders at that time included the government of Saudi Arabia, my presumption is there was an agent of the government of Saudi Arabia on the 47th floor discussing um, the events of the day, if you will, or pre-discussing, if that's the right word, 
with Chris Hyman, who was in a position to actually hijack those aircraft remotely through the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot and fly them with the QRS-11 gyro chip, which is refreshed 40 times a second, brokered by Hillary Clinton, into their targets. So if you have a patent granted or under consideration that allows you to interactively wager in real time on an event outcome before the event has an outcome, it means there are position, there are people inside that building with a position that could be key, be extremely lucrative if the event outcome is what they bet. And my theory is that Marsh, Marsh and McLennan offices between the 93rd and the 100th floor, they were running actually that war game. And because they would have been probable whistleblowers when the war game went live, they had to all be killed. Now, you tell me as a pilot, how accurate could an average Joe or an unaverage Joe, a low-time Muslim pilot who can barely fly a Cessna, pick out a given floor of the offices of the party that was probably running the war game as far as insurance and reinsurance? What level of precision would you expect, Field? Over to you. Zero. I don't think they could even hit the building. Well, they hit the middle of the floors. Well, they also hit uh, Gerald DeCanto's office on the Pentagon in the morning of 9-11. And do you recall uh, how many windows were at the Pentagon in the morning of 9-11? Uh, didn't you say 9,000? You're close. 7,000 windows. And we're told that some people, and it doesn't matter if they're Muslims, it matters more that they're young. Because if they're young pilots, you can infer from their youth that they're inexperienced and they don't know their ass from third base. Uh, so knowing that they don't know their ass from third base, I'm declaring it absolutely 100% impossible that they could do a um, slice back 270 degree right hand turn descending from 7,000 feet to 15 feet in a Boeing 757 because in order to do that you'd have to pull four to six G's and a Boeing 757 can only tolerate 2.5 positive G's or, or 1.0 negative G's. And so what that means, you'll either pull the wings off the 757 or you won't complete the turn and you'll go crashing into the ground. So we can rule out, we can eliminate totally the uh, chance or the likelihood or the fairy tale that Captain Chick Burlingame, who was my college classmate at Annapolis and also a war gamer who came up with a war game, they had to kill him too. Because just like I recognize my sister's signature on 9-11, Chick Burlingame would have recognized uh, the signature of his war game that he planned, so they had to get him uh, deader than a doornail. Uh, and as far as my sister's signature, maybe they should have gotten me deader than a doornail too, but there ends the problem because according to Psalm 91, 11 to 14 and Isaiah 54, 17, uh, they cannot get me deader than a doornail. And uh, Bucky and Agent Dice and an agent named Mad Dog and a couple of others saw an email I sent today to some guy out in San Diego, California, soliciting financial support for conservative congressional candidates. And my question to him is, why should anybody that has money uh, contribute to a candidate for office of Congress? Because that would help one guy out of 430, or one gal, or one person of dubious uh, gender, um, I think they call that gender unspecified. I, you know, they try to make all these uh, inclusions for perverts. Well, it's because the people running this country are perverts and the people running England are perverts. Uh, you can go back to Ted Heath and uh, long before him. Uh, Ted Heath on September 2nd of 1974 uh, lost his uh, boy bunking boy boat. That's a BBB. It was called Morning Cloud and it went down in a storm. Uh, went down on the storm on the 2nd of, seven, uh, 2nd of September of 1974. And we covered that in book uh, one, which was called Gadget Bet. Now we're writing book two. Uh, and the title of book two is Foul BVR. Uh, and if you Google Hillary Clinton and Foul BVR, you'll be up all night laughing at how inept these boneheads are. But having said that, just to show that we are live and unscripted, Anybody uh, within the sound of my voice, um, let me just see who that is right now at this moment, because I know Bucky's left. So I'll just rattle off who's listening that I know of. 
And I know that Afterburner's here, Anna Curtin, by the way, Anna Curtin's new, everybody should welcome her. Bent Ranch, Calvin Jones, David Hawkins, uh, Kinu Kiwi down in New Zealand, uh, Denise C. from the UK, Dutton McNichol from the UK, even though he's in international calling code 357, Duke McTurk, whose real name sounds more like Derek than Duke, Eleanor Rigby, who sits in a jar by the corner in the door, what are they for, all the lonely people, myself, free agent, George Holdsworth, Ginger Cookie, Griffin Eagle 7, who I met in England about 10 days ago, uh, Jackie Stamp, who I believe is in England, Jack Mack in Bremen, um, Jake Rawls uh, from somewhere in the Kansas side of Kansas City, uh, James Ken in Denver, J.J. Jono on Jersey, Kay Foster, who I must admit I don't uh, know the location, and uh, Lance Danger. Uh, of course, that's not his real name, but I would never say his real name because that's how we've lost absolutely zero agents over the last 10 years by identifying them by their real name. Hence, the reason that I never say Joyce when I'm talking about liverish peasants is because just like Marinath and Mensa and Autopilot, Oversight, Patty Windsor, Ryan Wilson, Scrooge, Sheila, Straight Shot, and Texas Maverick, they can all count on my silence when it comes to people bringing thumbscrews to the office here at 401 Main Street and asking who those people are. All of those people are welcome to send me a private email. Uh, you can copy people if you want, doesn't matter to me, but I would recommend a private email to fieldmcc at yahoo.com. <coughs> and uh, for those people who I just rattled off your name, if you were to send me a private email, uh, what I'll do to show you how unscripted and neutral we are is I'll put those, uh, let's say that you give me a st statement, and I'm going to make up a statement right now in front of you so you can see how easily it's done. This bottle of Guinness beer is empty, and I can prove it by doing that. Uh, so, having said that, uh, a, st a simple statement like this bottle of Guinness beer is full, and I'm going to give it to someone who comes the furthest distance from uh, wherever they live to the plunge in 2016, which is July 15th to the 17th off the top of my head, even though Jack Mack from Bremen, is it Bremen, Germany, or is it Bremen, Alabama? I don't know. Do you feel lucky today? Um, anyway, he's coming from somewhere, and uh, he'll be interested to know that yesterday I was driving the 36 stud, and it runs like a top. Uh, it still is missing a right window, by the way, but we'll sort that out in Texas if and when we get the ranch, and I'm being told we will get the ranch. Uh, that doesn't mean just because the funding comes we'll get that ranch. It could sell, but it hasn't sold in the last 184 days, so I'm hopeful that it won't sell in the next 30 or 40. Also, having said that, David, um, if we get people to support our quest to educate the people from M&M &M regarding a class action lawsuit, uh, we can expect stiff resistance from Alvin, Seymour, and Theodore. Uh, no, Simon, excuse me, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. The chipmunks, which could be a euphemism for Alvin Hellerstein, Michael B. Mukasey, and James Comey, all three elements of the Department of Justice who've been tasked with covering up 9-11 no matter what it takes because G.H.W. Bush, who may or may not have made $1 trillion on 9-11, uh, would like not to be discovered, which is sort of 2FB. Anybody know what 2FB stands for? Anyway, because I spoke uh, rather directly about G.H.W. Bush and Hillary Clinton when I was at AV7, which stands for Alternative View 7, which concluded uh, Monday of last week, and Monday of this week is 23rd, so I'm doing the math here, 23 take away 7 is the, that conference concluded last Monday the 16th, and we had a gentleman with a Naval Danger shirt have a medical event, we had another gentleman with a Naval Danger shirt lose a belt buckle, uh, but you know in a big game you have to expect losses, but we're not going to lose the, uh, the main game here is good versus evil, and if I wanted to put you on the spot, I could ask you a question with three answers. But you know me, David, I never want to put you on the spot. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, Field. And uh, they have their chipmunks. I've got Silas, and you've got a fairly ferocious looking animal, haven't you? Well, I've got two of them, but they uh, just like the people that send me information to fieldmcc at yahoo.com. My dogs shall remain nameless, and nobody dare put their picture up unless you know their names are Radar and Diesel. But if you know their names are Radar and Diesel and you have a picture of my dogs, feel free to put them up. Over to you, David. Yeah, and so I got Silas and you've got Ranger and what did you say the other one was? Well, you said Ranger, but I don't have a Ranger. Are you listening, David, or are you daydreaming again? I, I'm, I'm not very good at multitasking, especially with the speed you talk. 
Well, of course, that's why I talk fast, so these guys can't figure out where our information comes from. I'm not going to tell them, because our information comes from Daniel 2, 21, 22, and Isaiah 54, 17, and also Jeremiah 33, 3. And I've been saying that for years, and if they don't get it, that's just because they're 2FB. Right. Okay, well, uh, whatever your dogs are called, I've got Silas. We can take care of the chipmunks, but above all, we have Able Danger, the world's leading counterintelligence, pro bono, cloud-based uh, forensic economic service, and they've got nothing to compare with it. We can produce a post uh, in the morning, and by the afternoon, it's around the world three times before dinner, right? So they don't stand a chance in the propaganda game. And I think you use the word educate about their rights under a class action suit. And of course, that's the challenge. Um, taking a complex issue, but I look at, I've just put up a picture of um, the hotspots in the debris piles of the Ground Zero, um, September the 16th, 2001, September the 18th, 2001, and September the 23rd, 2001. And unless I'm much mistaken, no one claims that a plane hit building number seven. But if you look at the scatter and the randomness and the values of those hotspots, the, and this would come under this uh, thermodynamic term entropy, the disorder of the debris piles and the heat and the scatter is identical for buildings one, two, and seven. So whatever brought down one and two brought down seven, period, right? And as for, you know, column 79 buckling in building number seven and bringing the damn building down, if a column buckles, not every one of the other columns buckles in sympathy, Right? And you would never, ever get a building like that coming under free fall conditions, which is that the only thing that's stopping it uh, or making it fall is gravity. And unless I'm much mistaken, gravity acts downwards. So that doesn't explain the parabolic trajectory of 10-ton girders coming out of the top of buildings one and two as the rocket fuel in the elevator shafts is ignited, produces these very high-pressure gases and fires the 10-ton girders out in a parabolic arc so they actually embed themselves horizontally in other buildings 100 meters away, period. So unless they guys have suspended um, the laws of physics and looking at the caliber of uh, Obama and his crony wife, I mean, these guys, they don't even understand physics. I doubt if they can spell it. I think he pronounced uh, core as corpse, didn't he, Field? Over to you. Yeah, and he also participated in the killing of 38 men and a dog named Bart when Extortion 17 went down on the 6th of August of 2011. And the 38 men included seven Afghanis that were wearing plastic explosives in their vest. They didn't know it. They were duped by their country. 31 U.S. servicemen and a dog named Bart, who was controlled by a SEAL dog handler. And the SEAL dog handler, I can't pronounce his name, but he's from South Sioux City, uh, which is in Nebraska. Sioux City, of course, is in uh, Iowa. But uh, if we get the ranch, and I'm confident we're going to. But, David, I want to read two. Th First, I'm going to sing a song because... Ginger Cookie and uh, some others love it when I sing. In fact, Ginger Cookie just sent me something about Guinness. Um, and then Jake uh, Rawls sent me something. He sent me two things. But I've got to I got to lighten the mood a little bit and sing a song about Buffalo Billy. Are you ready, David? Go ahead. Buffalo Billy had a 10-foot willy, and he showed it to the girl next door. She thought it was a snake. She hit it with a rake, and now it's only 5 foot 4. What did you think of that one? Uh, well, uh, I think it's a little scatological. Well, I don't know what tautological is. Do you? T-A-U-T-O-L. Do you know what tautological means? Yeah, it's repeating the same meaning in it's, the sentence. Oh, is that right? Yeah. How do you know that? I know everything. Do you know what teleological means? Yes, it means somebody who thinks he's going to outwit his uh, mastermind partner and it hadn't happened in 10 years, so why should it happen now? That's roughly what I think it means. Am I correct? Well, a teleological system would be this uh, real-time interactive uh, wagering system because you're basically betting on a future event where you happen to know a bunch of thugs and saboteurs and assassins who will make sure that the event is delivered on the time you're betting. So you win. Can I read something that just came in? And I'll even tell, I won't tell you who it came from, uh, but it came in uh, just moments ago from a person I've met numerous times in Texas. She talked a lot about Texas and tomorrow morning she'll be buried there. That's a great song. The guy who sang that is still alive, by the way. He lives in uh, 
Branson, Missouri area, and he and his wife go uh, go fishing a lot. Uh, anyway, that's Cal Smith. He's the singer, and I know that his voice isn't quite what mine is, but you know he can dream, can't he? Uh, here's an email I just got from someone who is a well-established businessman or woman or business entity in Texas. I put out an email about two hours ago to some people I trust and uh, count on in Texas, and I ask about Louis Gomert, the congressman from Tyler, Texas, and I ask if he was. Uh, trustworthy. And of course, like any good attorney, come to think of it, there are no good attorneys, but like any skilled attorney, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. So I already knew that Louis Gomert was a good guy or I wouldn't have asked the question, but I got uh, I got answers from Ennis, Texas. I got answer from Canton, Texas. And here's one of those answers. U.S. Congressman Louis Gomert is a friend and patriot, one of the conservative champions of the house. Now if there is a uh, CH-53 pilot that knows where to get good uh, clams, lobster, or other types of seafood in Massachusetts, uh, there's your answer. Uh, Louis Gomer will probably be the first political person that is invited to come to the ranch in Athens, Texas, or send a staff member to the ranch in Athens, Texas. And what uh, the people that have acquired my services to operate the ranch in Texas, if it happens, and I truly believe it's going to, uh, they have asked me to find loyal servants of the Constitution of the state, uh, in this case, the state of the United States of America, uh, not the corporation of the United States of America that was created in February of 1871 with the Organic Act of 1871. But uh, this this comment from a person in Canton, Texas is 100% consistent with the comment from a person near Ennis, Texas who likes to eat rice and it's also consistent with a person that I know in Tyler, Texas uh, who is going to have a big part to play if the uh, Athens Ranch uh, grows wings and I think it would or I wouldn't be saying this so much today uh, and people can say, well, when? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not when hell freezes over anymore. But here's two more things that just came in. Uh, from, a, from Suzanne Darby in Maine, uh, she apparently liked it when I picked up the uh, Guinness. And so maybe she's going to send me one sentence for Chapter 2 of Book 2, which I'm writing today. And I'd like to say I'd have it finished today, which I may, may not. Then from a guy near, near Kansas City, I've got a picture of a fat boy, which is a Harley, it's a 2010 model, and he wants an able danger decal for his uh, Harley. And so I think I'll put a man on that right away, and we'll get some able danger decals printed up. That can't cost too much. And then uh, a same person um, from the Kansas side of Kansas City, I missed so much since last fall. Did I hear right about another court case being brought against the latest pig? I have a lab named Radar. Okay, well, I have a French Mastiff. Of course, I hate all things French, uh, with the exception of someone whose name is Foxfield. Uh, that's not his real name, because I never divulge uh, personalities. But, David, I don't think you know this, but I spent about 40 minutes on a phone conversation last Thursday with a descendant of a French Navy hero of the Colonial War, meaning 1776 to 19, excuse me, 1789, roughly, and next time uh, Agent Dice and I are over in England, there's a very good chance that we'll have dinner or lunch or supper or a pint. Uh, of course, because Agent Dice is uh, always needing to protect me physically in case bad guys try to strong arm me, she always drinks orange juice with grenadine so that her perceptory uh, responses are not dulled by alcohol. And of course, uh, some people think that my responses could be dulled by alcohol, but that depends on if they can tell the difference between water and vodka. Over to you, David. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Well, uh, just to remind people a little bit of history, uh, the Lloyd's uh, insurance market was started in 1688, and White's Club, which is basically operating as a deathbed bookmaker since uh, 1692, four years apart, these two organizations are actually perfectly positioned today to stage the 911 attack 
and using software distribute bigs or benefits to all of the people who brought those buildings down. So I just read, um, this is from an article, Insurance Insider, it's a good term. XL Kaplan leads Egypt Air Program, that's the insurance cover for the plane that crashed into the Mediterranean. This is four days ago. Talbot is the lead underwriter for the Hull war slip, war slip, with the rest believed to be on one of Marsh's line slips in the Lloyd's market. That means the passengers that were targeted in a dead peasant life insurance fraud by the insurance companies who are shareholders in Serco have covered off that risk in what is known as a reinsurance fraud. So if you calculate um, the odds against everyone on board that plane being killed in a crash at a particular time, uh, most investors in that market believe it's extremely unlikely. Maybe they're learning a little bit. Uh, so you can cover yourself off with a very nice payoff in the reinsurance market and double or triple your money pay out to the uh, families of the people who died and then claim, like AXA did with the Twin Towers, a huge insurance markup through the reinsurance. Anyway, it's 12-17 field. Um, I'm personally committing and I do invite and I hope that uh, we get uh, support from Able Danger to see if we can identify some of the characters <coughs> who might be interested in forming a class action suit. I've got some contacts in the Lloyd's insurance market. I've got a few contacts in the UK, and I'll do what I can, but I'd very much like us to get, uh, uh, maybe it's an unfortunate sense of the word, able danger to get monetized. So for all the good work it does, it gets paid, including the network of researchers, including the individual who managed to get me a copy of that uh, uh, real-time interactive wagering patent for event outcomes. Over to you, Phil. Have you ever heard that term coming into the courtroom with clean hands? Yep. Okay. See, I don't, I, I personally don't want to get paid by any of these goons, but I just got an email from somebody called Delta Victor over in England, and he lives on a river in the north of England, uh, and uh, I'm not sure what town he lives on or what river he lives on, but uh, his agent name is Delta Victor. He's got an Able Danger belt buckle and T-shirt, so you know he's a good guy. And he just sent me an email that that uh, some corporation or entity owns 10% of Circo, and I've asked him to identify who he's talking about. Um, and I don't have an answer yet, but uh, David, is there any chance he's talking about the M&M &M people owning 10% of Circo? Uh no, I think Eminem was a victim because they were running the wagering system and they, he wanted to kill the whistleblowers. To answer your question, I think the 10% is probably lodged with the United Kingdom government of David Cameron. Oh, okay. Well, good. Because everyone wants to see David Cameron uh, fade from the scene, and probably including his wife with a very small forehead um, and a fish on her right ankle. Uh, a fish tattoo, of course. I'm not talking about a real fish. Speaking of real fish, there's two dead fish in the pond in Palm City, but I think they'll be gone by the time we have the plunge. I see that someone put up a picture of Colonel James Sabo, and if George H.W. Bush thinks that Sabo is going anywhere, uh, you're absolutely wrong, Georgie. Georgie put in pie, kiss my ass, or else I'll cry. So did you want to get going, David? Uh, no, I want to make another comment about Colonel James Sabo. Remember that uh, the announcement of his death was made in Zulu time about uh, eight hours before he actually died. And that's consistent with my theory that they're operating a long range uh, fragging group, uh, whether fragging describes being hit in the back of the head with a baseball bat, I don't know, but it's a pretty good metaphor. Um, I think it probably broke his skull or certainly did him serious uh, damage, knocked him out. Um, but I think, uh, the key to the timing of these insured or pre-insured events is the Zulu clock, which is in the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. Um, prior to being called a Zulu clock, it was called a cesium fountain clock and ran GNT. And it's been in the custody of Circo. It's actually been taken away from Circo, uh, I think, last year, the responsibility for operating that clock. But it's been given to the university section, so I imagine the teachers are now operating the um, interactive uh, gambling and taking out people who disagree with them on, for example, global warming. 
where we're now committed to global warming or capping global warming, which justifies killing, for example, a million people in Rwanda. So they're scumbags, they're parasites, and uh, but I think in order to take these people on, we need a properly financed com uh, campaign. Over to you. Okay. Well, I uh, I think God's going to sort it out, frankly. Uh, we'll find out. Somebody put up a picture of a black Harley and a 2010 model. I don't know if that's a fat boy because I don't know a fat boy from Michael uh, LaVon Robinson. Oh, excuse me, Michelle LaVon Robinson, who's got a kickstand. Uh, probably got a tailpipe like the two coming out the right side of that Harley. Uh, but enough about that. If you want to take a hike, go ahead. I'm still trying to find out who owns 10% of whoever I said it was. So I'm going to go back to the email and I'm going to read it one last time. It says they own 10% Circle PLC shares and took a previous, take a look at the previous director and secretaries. Ah, this will help. Uh, the previous director and secretaries, let me scroll down. Mr. Glenn R. Furman, he was appointed on the 10th of February of 26. Uh, Mr. John C. Phelan, same date. Mr. Mark R. Lisker, same date. Uh, London Registrar's Limited, 20 March 2006, uh, Mr. Mark R. Lisker again. So somebody over there in England that uh, has been by the offices located at 788 to 790 Finchley Road is uh, communicating with us. And it's funny how little by little, drip, 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 tick-tock, tick-tock, uh, people find out that if they ever want to get anything resolved, they pretty much need to get the information to Able Danger. Otherwise, they might be exposed. And someone here is yawning. So I think that means whenever you want to leave, David, we'll terminate this uh, enduro. Okay, uh, but I still I can't see what, where is the 10% shareholder in Circo. Could we identify that? No, not yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've sent an email back to the individual over in England who sent it to me, and I'm absolutely confident that uh, I will be told. Uh, let me think of what time. It was six minutes ago that that party... Uh, that party, by the way, has a dog named Sam. Come and listen to a story about a dog named Sam. Old canine had a girlfriend that, that's a bam. You know what a bam is, David? Bam, no. A broad-ass Marine. It means a female in the Marine Corps. Now, some of those would have uh, alternative lifestyles and some wouldn't. But most people in the Marine Corps are uh, straight, and most people in the Marine Corps will either gain victory or die trying, but it should be a fair fight, and it shouldn't be your own commanders that are killing you. Uh, such was the case with Extortion 17 and Pat Tillman, and such is the case with a lot of people, like, say, 2,200-plus innocent victims of Barry Swatero, who sh should not be the uh, commander-in-chief uh, from 20 January of 2009 till the current date, because as an Indonesian Muslim who was appointed to Occidental College by William J. Fulbright of Arkansas, where they raised some of the biggest P PFers in the country, um, you can't both be a foreign student and become a domestic president. So I think that uh, the Brits who crammed down Barry Spatero crammed him down our throats. I think they probably will be exposed, and uh, I feel confident they'll be exposed while I'm still on this side of the grass, if you get my drift, give or take, plus or minus. David, did I put you to sleep? Uh, no, no, no. You never do that, Phil. But, I, but you did actually fire me up because I was just thinking about how Hillary Clinton accumulated all of these 911 patents in a patent pool in the office of the Secretary of the Navy, shortened up into SECNAV. And this woman, Nora Slatkin, was a member of the Senior Executive Service with the sister. And she was the one who basically took on the job of running the CIA, which was offloaded to her by the treasonous John Deutsch. And so Slatkin would have been in a position to make sure that all of the patents necessary to execute the 911 attack and kill all the potential witnesses in the Martian McLennan offices, she would have been the one that allocated uh, Zulu time to synchronize the attack. And she's a very important suspect uh, with your sister in the murder, the mass murder of uh, the people in the Marshall McLennan offices. Over to you, and um, I'm happy to leave now and look forward to the next show field, and over and out. Okay, that'll be Thursday, and uh, 
Let me see if Mensa Max is here or if he's left early. He's still here, so he can give us the big red button, the three, two, one, push it, or any derivative thereof. And I'll be sitting here until I see a big red button, a big yellow button, a big blue button, a big red button, a uh, big green button, 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 who's got the button? David says goodbye. So I wonder if he's going to hang up first or if I'll be able to get rid of him. Oh, I guess I got rid of him. That was sort of satisfying. Um, all right, elicited a reaction from uh, the uh, PWA to my right. Now, of course, there's the big red button. So I'm looking. Field McConnell. I'm just fine. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm not. No. Okay. Uh, let me just turn off. I'm on a live radio. Let me just turn it off so people don't know who I'm talking to.